Hey there, internet friends. Larry the Music Guy here. Uh, getting back on my videos here. It's been a little while. Hot minute. Uh, summer's over with. My band, uh, Crazy Delicious, is done playing all of our festivals and outdoor kind of things. That is our busy time of year, so we're back into the bars. It slows down just a little bit, and uh, I spent all my hard-earned money from the band this year putting it back into my studio down here, so I've got a lot of really cool updates to my studio things to talk about here in the future now got all kinds of new equipment uh, but this video today is specific to the first thing I did was update my MacBook Pro 13 it was a 2013 model so it was getting pretty old it was starting to struggle a little bit with some recording stuff uh, I decided to jump in and get the Mac Mini M1 seen nothing but good things on that so bought that which started out the process of like now I need to update my um, interface I was using some Presonus Fire Studio Lives that I've been oh, probably using for 10 years, so it was time to update that. So I went to the uh, Universal Audio uh, Apollo Twin X. So we're going to talk about what it takes to basically get those talking to one another. There's some stuff you, some hoops you got to jump through on your Mac Mini and the OS setup um, at the time of when I did mine. So I'm sure that's probably still going to be true for a while. Uh, but anyway, this is what you got to do to get that hooked up. We're going to get into it right now. going to spend a lot of time on this just give you a couple first impressions like a lot of other videos say it's definitely felt like it's built very very solid very well all right we're gonna go down and uh this video is being made particularly because i didn't find a lot of support on youtube about uh, running with a, I've got a Mac Mini with the M1 silicon chip, and there's some things that you have to do here that I want to bring everybody aware, make everybody aware of. You have to do um, a little deal with your Mac before it will recognize and see the Apollo Twin. So I'm going to record the process and uh, take you through it. This is my old Mac, and my Mac Mini is downstairs in my studio. So we're gonna head on down there and uh, start this process. All right guys, couple of preparatory things I gotta go over with you. Uh, first off, one of the challenges of the Mac Mini um, is it has two lightning bolt connections out. Um, and I'm using the HDMI out of the Mac Mini to go to one of my monitors. And then I'm using one of the lightning bolt uh, ports to go to my digital video to that monitor. So that only leaves me one lightning bolt connection, which I need for this. So I've unplugged this temporarily. It's my little port there. I've got that disconnected. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all hooked up and then we're gonna go into that um, power up uh, and go into the settings uh, on screen and do what we need to do there. So we'll document that for you. Okay, we have to start the computer in Mac OS recovery. So I got my computer shut down. We're gonna press and hold the power button on until we see loading startup options. Pushing, holding, holding. All right, here we go. Options continue. Okay, type in my password, just one second. Okay, it looks like it's saying up here to utilities, start security utility. Okay, it's saying here to uh, select that security policy tab there at the bottom. Now we're gonna come over here and 
that. We're going to do reduced security. Reduce security and allow user management of kernel extensions. All right. I'm going to ask for my password. Hit OK. Supplying security policy. Once it's done doing its thing there. Okay, it doesn't really say what to do after you get to this point. So you come up here in the top left hand corner and you get, here's your options. I suppose quit startup disk might work too, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do shut down. And when that shuts down, I did plug in the power on my Apollo Twin X Duo. Gonna plug in to the Firewire, or excuse me, Thunderbolt. Firewire is my old technology, Thunderbolt. Three, four, same protocols, 40 gigabytes per second. And once again, thanks to Sweetwater for sending the Thunderbolt cable with, since Universal Audio doesn't send a cable with, which is kind of crazy for the amount of money you spend. But anyway, we're all hooked up there. And I'm going to power it up and then restart my Mac Mini M1. Okay. And it says from here, basically, we need to go um, follow the instructions for uh, UAD installation on Big Sur. So we'll go to that article next. Okay, guys, just real quick here. If you're uh, wondering what version you're running, here we are, Mac OS Big Sur version 11.4. Okay, so I found this a little bit confusing. Basically, you follow the Mac OS 11 Big Sur instructions for the Intel once you've gone in and done what we've done already, which is go in and change the security um, on the Mac itself. So now we just follow the Big Sur installation. So it's gonna have six manual steps to uh, fully enable the UAD and Apollo software. So here we go. Okay, you need to go to uaudio.com. Uh, if you haven't created an account, already create the account. Once you created the account, go ahead and get logged in and then you're gonna want to register a new device. All right, I forgot to record those first two steps, but it basically tells you to uh, connect your uh, Apollo Twin X to your computer. And then um, it wants to know what model it is. You click on the model, it must see it. Now it's telling you, you can download for PC, download for older Mac OS, or if you're gonna do for Big Sur, which is what we are, this is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna get UAD software plus Luna. And you see it downloading right there. We're gonna let it do its thing. One thing I'm gonna point out is that it tells you for best results to uh, make sure you have your, your device plugged in and powered up. So I'm still downloading, but I'm gonna hit this next button. It says install and restart. Okay, so it downloads two files, one for the UAD um, software and then one for Luna, which is their um, recording software that you get with this package as well. So I double clicked on it. It's in a zip file. Um, it opened it up uh, in that zip file and clicked on the UAD um, package. And this is what it's coming up here. I did say, go ahead and open it up. 
We're going to hit continue, continue, agree, continue. It's doing its thing. Okay guys, kind of ran into a little thing here I wanted you to see. Some sort of security issue. So you gotta go in here and uh, allow it to do its extension and it's gonna do need to do a restart. So we're gonna do that right now. So interesting note, when I restarted, it uh, pulled everything back up to where it was at and then it said it needed a firmware update. So I went ahead and did that and it says to complete the firmware update, power off the device for several seconds and then turn it back on. Several seconds. How many seconds would several seconds be? 1001, 1002, 1003, 1000. All right, that seems like a lot of several seconds, doesn't it? back on we'll see if this does anything up here automatically okay it must recognize everything even though I wasn't sure it's was gonna have to reinstall the software or not it appears as if you did not it's recognizing me saying we're just a few steps away from registering. And we get a free UAD plugin. Okay, now that I've got the interface installed with the console, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, load the Lunar software now. So I'll, I'll go through the install process here. If there's anything important I think you need to know, I'll record it. So pretty typical Mac thing. You got to come over and take the Luna software and drop it into your applications folder, which I just did. It's copying it over to my applications folder and it should be there ready to go in just a second. And then you see once, uh, have it installed, that's the software right there. We got the universal audio control panel and then the console. So we should be all ready to go and get things fired up. So on the previous page, I tried to sell you a bunch of plugins. They give you a good deal on bundle packages, but this tapped me out. So I didn't have any money left over to do anything fun like that. So um, I just said, no, thank you. Went to the next page. It tells you to click this UAD button right there, which pops up this menu. I brought it over to this page. You hit this authorize plugins right there, and it authorizes all the plugins that came with the interface there. And you'll see the ones that are authorized and ones that aren't. So it leaves you lots to buy. That could be dangerous. But all my plugins that came with it have been authorized, so we should be good to go. And I think that's the last of it, we're gonna hit finish. So it sees my hardware device. And uh, we should be good to go. Hopefully this was helpful for you Mac Mini M1 users. Um, gotta jump through a little bit of hoops, but um, I think if you know it on the front end and you don't battle it, like I've seen a couple of guys say that they had to do, um, Hopefully this is helpful to you. Hey, I appreciate making it to the end of the uh, video tutorial here on how to hook up your Mac Mini M1 to the Universal Audio um, Apollo Twin X. Uh, I've obviously only been using this for a little bit now. I want to use it for a little bit longer and then I'll do a little review on it. Did want to let you know that I did buy the additional UA2 satellite. I got the Octo, so it's the 8 um, chips in it so it's the biggest storage you can get because the whole thing with 
the Apollo and Universal Audio is that the plugins run off of the uh, interface module, and then you can buy basically additional um, RAM, if you will, uh, in a Universal Audio box. And uh, so it allows you, for my situation, I've been using it so far, it's kind of cool because you can use your PC or your uh, MacBook Mini or your MacBook Pro to have some of the load of the plugins and then run some additional plugins off of the Universal Audio because it does not take any of your computer CPU power. So it just gave me the ability to run more plugins on my computer or just run them over there depending on which what I'm doing and what I need. So it gave me a whole lot more options and uh, a lot more better quality plugins with Universal Audio, I can tell you that so far. So anyway, I'll be sharing with that uh, here coming up after I use it a little bit longer. And uh, if you like what you've seen here today and you like talking about recording studios and playing in bands, things like that, I appreciate you subscribe and share with uh, your band guys. And hopefully I'll see you back here again. And remember, just get on out there and guitar done.